Hello, my friends. Kevin, the comic doctor, coming to you with another edition of One on One. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, shipping comic books to CGC from Canada. Yes, guys, this is not an unboxing. That's kind of weird. I do have boxes to share with you. Uh, I have uh, I had, a, as you all know, I had some eye surgery a few weeks back. I kind of had a setback earlier this week, so I'm back to not lifting anything or doing anything crazy. Uh, just to let the sucker heal a little bit more, but uh, there will be an unboxing probably later in the weekend, probably Sunday, maybe even Monday, but I'm going to try for Sunday. But again, this is not an unboxing, guys. This is a, uh, a show where I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sending your books to CGC. I've had a lot of people, Canadians in particular, of course, asking me, and some of this will apply to Americans sending books up to Canada for service by me, but Primarily, this video was talking to fellow Canadians who want to ship their books down to CGC to be graded on their own. Uh, I had a client contact me uh, early last week asking about that, and he requested a video. And I have done videos like this in the past, but again, this is a more of an updated one that I'm going to do. I'll go to the chat in a few moments. Um, again, this is more of a, it's a public service announcement. I'm going to give you my two cents worth about shipping books down to Florida. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is um, customs. Um, uh, I, like, I like to tell stories, right? I like to tell stories. But when I first started sending books to CGC, I started getting all these mysterious um uh, service charges from CGC and I couldn't understand what the hell they were. You know, I'd have my, my, uh, my comics, um, you know, grading fees. And then I have like a $15 fee and a $20 fee and a $15 fee, a $20 fee. And I'm like, what the hell are all these extra fees? And at first I thought these fees were like, um, you know, conversion, you know, Canadian to American conversions or what have you. But then I later discovered that what was happening is as my boxes were going through customs, they were then customs was billing CGC on my behalf. Right. And I had a broker, but for some reason, as the boxes were going down, they would they would um, bill CGC a month later. Then I get a bill, and over the course of a year, you can imagine my bill was a few thousand. You know, it was a few thousand, but probably probably fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars in these extra fees. And I never understood why. So I finally got down to it and figured out exactly what it was. And that's essentially what it was. CGC was charging me for customs clearance fees that they were being charged on my behalf and they were back charging me and what sucked about that is that remember uh it was customs canada was 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 billing them in canadian they were converting it to american then back to canada it was a real mess so i had to contact canada customs and or sorry i had to contact my broker and my broker is the fedex trade now works is through fedex and uh, I arranged uh, that every single box that I said, I told them, I said, listen, every box I send to CGC or to the States is, is are comic books that are going to CGC in Sarasota, Florida. You can check my account. Every single box I've sent in the last like 10 months have gone to Sarasota. It's for the exact same thing. And when the books are coming back, the same thing applies. There are customs clearance fees. So um, how do you avoid these? Well, unfortunately, you can't. Now, sometimes you'll get lucky. And uh, when you ship books down, if you're doing it once in a blue moon, they won't get you. But you got to understand, guys, I'm sending boxes down four or five times a month sometimes and receiving a ton of books, as you as you see. So they, they know me and they charge me. So every single box that I get back from Sarasota, I'm charged a flat rate. I mean, I negotiated a flat rate with, with, with FedEx trade networks. Whether it's one book or 25 books, it's the same fee per box. Going down... Going down, I haven't had any issues. And I found that the best company to use to avoid any surprise fees going down to CGC is FedEx. Whether you, at FedEx Express, uh, like International Express today is the best one because those tend to have all the fees kind of built in. Um, but it's more expensive, right? FedEx ground, it's not included. So sometimes you might get snagged with that. Now, what are customs clearance fees? Customs clearance fees are not taxes, right? Customs clearance fees are, are fees that you pay uh, to a broker to, to clear the box going from Canada 
into the United States. Remember, you are exporting, even with your own books, you're exporting those into uh, the United States. And when they come back, CGC is exporting those back into Canada. So it's a lot, it's a real, it's a real, uh, you know, again, if you're doing it a lot, you're going to start seeing these fees start pop up more regularly. Again, if you're doing it once in a blue moon, to avoid any surprises, I would really recommend uh, using FedEx Two Day International Express. And if you stick around this video, I'm going to sh tell you about a great site that you can sign up for to get amazing rates with that service. Um, okay, now this is very important too. Uh, hold on, right here. You have to fill out one of these guys. And this is a generic customs commercial invoice every time you send uh parcels into the united states uh and even from the united states back into canada you're supposed to fill out a commercial invoice and the commercial invoice basically just tells you what's in the package how much it weighs uh, uh and and what's the reason that you're sending the the package to the united states and um values again like i said these are very in, important if you if you if you miss if you do not fill one of these out and you and they pick up your your parcel there's a good chance you're going to get delays. Uh, on a couple of occasions, CGC forgot to put the, this inside my box and delayed it by up to a week. Because uh, then, yeah, they hold the parcel till CGC faxes them another one, what have you. But a commercial invoice is very important. Um, so you have to attach one of these to the outside of your box next to your shipping label, okay? Um, whether you're a business or an individual, you must... Uh, fill one of these out. Now, these are usually generated when you uh, are on the UPS site or, or FedEx site. They'll generate a commercial invoice for you where you can print. If it does not, you can always just download a generic uh, template for Microsoft Word off of Google, and they usually work. Or you can just create your own in Excel or whatever. It's 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 pretty pretty straightforward. Again, you know, where the, where's the package going? Who's it from? Value purpose reason for why you're selling it or sending the par par parcel down now what i always do when i send um do i have it here well let's see if i have it here uh of course i don't uh, i had something i was going to show you of course i don't have it here did it fall on the ground no it didn't okay it's right here what am i talking about so i had this stamp made and this stamp i i i put on every single parcel i don't know if you can read this or not let's see and so basically, it tells customs that contents, let's see if I can get closer, contents are um, are being sent for appraisal, grading will be returned once service is complete, thank you. So I, I put that stamp on every single commercial invoice, just to let them, the customs agent know that these are not sold. These are not sold items. And when you're sending books to CGC, you you have to write that on the commercial invoice. Trust me. You want to indicate that the, the comics you're sending have not been sold, that they're actually, you can write this down by hand, but I would do it in bold, red, that they are, have not been sold and the books are going to be returned upon completion of the grading service. Okay, that is incumbent upon you to put that on that commercial invoice. All right. Um, uh, there's one more thing about that too. And you also, okay, now, the value of the books. I'm going to tell you, if you decide to put down the actual value of your comic books on this commercial invoice right here, if you're sending down an AF-15 or a Hulk-181 and your comics are, say, uh, twenty-five dollars or $30,000, I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to red flag your box. They're going to red flag your box, and then they're probably going to charge you uh, really exorbitant, customs clearance fees it's a percentage usually and they may even end up charging cgc uh taxes and then in which case cgc will, will, will charge you those taxes in the long run so what do i tell people to put on on their customs clearance fees or on, on their on their commercial invoice i talked to revenue canada about this and they didn't like my answer but i have no i, I said listen i go because Revenue Canada is is it deals with importation and exportation and all that, but I tried to explain them what I was doing, and I said I can't put down the actual values because if I do, I'm going to be charged every month, and I have to go through a lot of uh, bureaucracy to try to get that money back, um, and it's too much of a headache. So I put down that every single comic is between one dollar and five dollars, depending on how many books I'm sending down, whether that comic's an AF15. 
or uh, Hulk 181 or uh, whatever expensive book you can imagine. And I learned that technique from CGC. When CGC sends books into Canada, they put down in a box of 125 books. They meant they, they said that each book is each book is worth five dollars to keep the value of the parcel down. Otherwise, those parcels are red flagged, and Canadians are being charged stupid customs clearance fees and stupid uh, taxes on their own books. And can you get your money back? Yeah, maybe eight months later after a lot of paperwork and red tape. So. Commercial invoice will get your parcel to CGC faster. Fill it out completely. You also want to indicate again that the comics are not sold, that they're going for uh, service and will be returned to you, the owner, upon completion. You can phrase it any way you like. And you also want to keep the value of the comics down. Okay? So that is it uh, pretty much for customs. Um be specific don't don't baloney them like i never lie on this form like the only thing i'm fudging is the value and the only reason i'm doing that is because otherwise it's going to be a, a real headache to get those books back but i always take exactly how many books are in the parcel i always talk about um you know where the books are going why they're going there and guys i, I i'll be honest i have a relationship now I feel with the FedEx trade networks, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if the customs clearance people know, know me now. I've been doing this for like eight years, CGC, probably longer actually. And um, yeah, they kind of know, you know. But for you, if you're sitting your own books down, uh, it's your first time, be very thorough with this, okay? I'll go to the chat really question. If you have any, if you have any questions about customs clearance, we, we, can, we can take it up there. If not, I'll jump into insurance next. Okay, so let's go over. I see some guys are there. Guys, I'm going to skim over questions that deal with anything other than what we're talking about today. Still not feeling 100%, but I just want to get on here and, and make connection with you guys. I haven't been here for several days. Um, where is it? Where is it? Chat, chat window. There it is. Okay, let's go see who's here. Okay, Dennis has been really busy. Wow. Mike, hi everyone. Hope to see some nice books. Not today, Mike, unfortunately. Is it possible to pick up my book Saturday? That would be sweet. If so, thanks, Kev. You should be able to, Mike. Could you, did you not? I think you, you made an appointment, didn't you? I can't remember. Dennis is talking about Star Trek. I'm watching it too. It's quite good. Uh, P-Man. Hey, all. Hey, Kev. How's it going, P-Man? Uh, boy, Dennis, <laughs> you're busy today. Uh, Peter, two degrees Celsius in Southern Ontario after four months of winter. I know, Dennis. Hopefully this will be it because I'm tired. I'm tired of it all. Uh, hey, how you doing, James? How are you? The granite beard survives another week. Not for long. Herb1211. Hi, Kevin. Chilly night here in Maple, Ontario. Uh, yeah, it's getting warmer, though. I hope, I thought, I hope it is. Uh... Hidden fees is how they get you. Okay. Hidden fees. I'm going to tell you straight up. The worst company for hidden fees, if you're shipping down to the down south, is UPS. UPS are the worst. Will your parcel get to where it's going? Damn right. Will the person you're sending the parcel to uh, be charged something? Damn right. And, and I'm going to give you an example of this. As you know, I'm a presser, <laughs> and I just bought a press from a guy down in the states, and I filled out, I ordered the um, the label for him, the shipping label, and that was sent to him. Uh, I sent him that label last week, and I used UPS because FedEx for some reason wasn't uh, going to his area. It was in Alabama, I think, if I remember correctly. Anyways, I knew that by using UPS, I was going to get a phone call a couple of days later saying, hi, it's UPS. Uh, do you want us to clear your parcel for you? And I knew they would charge me 30 or $40 more to do so. So whenever they call me, I say, no, thank you for that. But please, oh, do you have another, another broker? I said, yes, use the FedEx trade networks. And I say, okay, thank you. They hang up and they deliver the, they, they deliver the parcel. And guess what? I never get billed. I've never been billed once from FedEx trade for anything that shipped over through UPS. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a scam as far as I'm concerned, but UPS are notorious for that. Now FedEx is not, 
and you pay a little bit more for FedEx when you're buying their shipping labels, but they don't usually screw you later. You know what you're paying up front, and that's usually it. Now, if customs charges you something else, that's not necessarily FedEx, right? That's the your country, either the United States or Canada. But FedEx usually, once you pay, and then that's it. UPS, forget it. Now, in Canada, UPS is awesome. I'll use UPS to ship parcels back to Quebec, to BC, to Alberta, Nova Scotia, whatever, and I've had no problems whatsoever. There's no because there's no it's not crossing any borders. But as soon as you start crossing borders, UPS is going to try to get you with hidden fees. So Dennis or so Dave, thanks for bringing that up. Let's continue. Um, uh, I don't know, Dennis. Uh, Patty, man, what a ring of a roll. The joys. Yeah, I know. I but you know what? It sounds it sounds worse than it actually is. The more you do it, the the better at it you get, and you kind of the ins and outs you figure out. Uh, also looks like Fan Expo was fun for you guys. I made it Saturday, first time since 2012. What, it was so busy, Patty's projects. Mark, Jack really wanted to go, so we went. But man, it was too it was too crammed in there. It was too crammed in there. Uh, boy, Dennis, what's going on with you tonight? You're just talking up a storm here. John, see you on Saturday. Look forward to it. Um, hope you made that appointment. Make sure you make it. If you're coming to see me on Saturday, make sure you've made an appointment. If you haven't made an appointment yet, go over to my uh, my uh, my website. Go to contact the contact button. And there's a blue button to make an appointment to see me in shop. Okay. Uh, UPS came to my door, Patty says, and then somehow was able to cha charge me 40% before she handed me my package, and that was disclosed nowhere. Exactly. That is UPS, man. That is UPS. Patty's projects. I don't know what it is exactly, but it seemed to be around 40% of my total order price, but not sure how they do it. Yeah, it's 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 usually not just UP UPS is saying it's customs clearance fees and paper fees and air fee or whatever they're making things up you know what i mean um that's why if you're shipping over over the border i would strongly suggest you do not use ups unless there's no other service fedex i'm telling you is has been the best for me john how's it going be happy to know most of your books all but that star wars books are now complete i gotta work on that hopefully the next day or so your books will be out to, to cgc Scott Riley's here. I've sent two submissions of 19 books each to CGC in the past year with UPS. I didn't see any extra fees at the time of sending or in my bill from CGC. That is good. Then you locked out, my friend. Scott, was that going where? Where were they going? Back and forth to Canada or where exactly? Dennis, you have friends? What are you talking about, Dennis? You have lots of friends. Don't say that. We're your friends. Okay. So that's it for customs fees. Let's go over and out and talk a little bit about insurance. Um, there we go. Okay, let's talk about insurance. Okay. So insurance. <laughs> Kevin, should I buy insurance? Should I buy insurance from, um, from UPS? Should I buy insurance from FedEx? Should I buy insurance from my, the post office? What should I do? Well, I've always heard that trying to get and if, you, if a parcel is lost or damaged or what have you, I was always told that trying to get money for collectibles is like trying to get blood from a stone. Uh, I often tell people, instead of spending exorbitant amount of money on, on insurance, up your service tier instead. What I mean by that is this. Okay, say I am... Say I'm going to send uh, an Amazing Fantasy 15 to Florida, okay? And it's a $20,000 book. Uh, I can try to buy insurance for that through FedEx, which would be extremely expensive. And maybe I'll use ground service or express service or get there in two days. Or I can take that money and instead just buy priority service from FedEx and the parcels there 1030 the next morning. I would recommend doing that. Now, are you are you secure if you know, if, if something happens, no, you're not. If your Amazing Fantasy 15 goes missing, even in the in, in the in the priority uh, stage of things, then you're up the creek. But you really are on the hook for your own insurance. So you you have to do your due diligence and ask FedEx or ask Canada Post or ask UPS again, your carrier, which one, wh what what will happen if and, and get it in writing. Say, okay, I'm going to set a collectible that's valued at this much money. I'm going to buy the insurance. You know, am I covered? Because you don't want to spend like you know five hundred dollars on insurance only to find that it's 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 a bunch of nonsense. Um, 
you know? So make sure you know your ins and outs. I'm going to tell you guys, honestly, if you're in Canada, you're better, you're better off to send your books to somebody who does it all the time. I'll tell you straight up. It's a, it's a real pain in the rear end to send books to Florida, do all the paperwork, deal with the insurance, especially if you got high value books to, you know, um, and again, I'm never saying you have to use me. I never, ever say that. I'm, I'm so busy. I, I don't even need more right now, but I'm saying if you have, if you if you have a local comic shop that's been doing this for a long time and is organized and is, is well-respected and is a real CGC dealer and they're offering service to ship your books down and they're offering you insurance on your books as well. That is what I would recommend you do, especially for the high, high, the high value stuff. Um, because they should have shipping insurance, Bailey's shipping insurance in place. I do, right? So I would imagine my colleagues out there do as well. I hope they do. Um, but insurance through FedEx, through Canada Post, through a carrier is, is a real gray area. And I've always been told that trying to get you know, money from them, if something were to go wrong, is a real rigmarole. And I'd hate to see anybody is is going through that uh, trying to get something from them even after they paid for it um yeah let's go back here and see what you guys think patty's projects fan expo is oh, oh uh scott says from trenton ontario well you know what scott you lucked out and again sometimes if you're doing one-offs here and there they'll sneak by and you won't get charged a damn thing I i've seen that happen i've heard that before but sometimes, somewhere, you're going to get dinged. And like um, and like Patty said, it's oftentimes like 40% of your entire, the value of the, of the item. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, Patty says, Fan Expo was certainly crammed and busy, uh, but the memory's got to be great, I'm sure. I know I remember when I went back in the day with my dad, he wasn't into it either than meeting the naked news lady oh, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, I like going. I just wish they would have been in the other other auditorium because this the the hall the hall in which they went was was a little too crammed. I mean, you couldn't even move, and that gets a little bit. I'm old now. I'm old and crusty. I don't want to be bumping into people all night. Uh, Dennis says uh, USPS lost my hundred eight dollar package last month. There you go, United States Postal Service. What about mechanical error returns? Do you need a commercial invoice or is it included in the label that CGC provides? Uh, it sh they, they should have a commercial invoice as well with that. And I, I've had mechanical errors uh, sent back to me, like the, the, the labels, and they usually also include a, uh, a commercial invoice. Now, some third-party... Um, uh, companies that kind of generate ship, you know, shipping labels for UPS and FedEx, they have a new system now where you don't, where the, um, it's a paperless commercial invoice, but I don't give a damn. I still include a commercial invoice. I don't, I don't, I don't trust it. I want to have all my ducks lined up when I'm sending these big books in or orders in. But in the past, Rob, when uh, CGC has sent me mechanical errors and I'm waiting for three mechanical error um, sh uh, shipping labels right now, they usually do include uh, commercial invoices as well. Uh, Lord Thoss has agreed. I, okay. <laughs> Peter G, any word on the 2K giveaways? Nope, I'm still waiting on just getting better. It was going to be this weekend. Uh, it, it'll just pop. It'll be very soon, though. I'm ready for it. I just want to be 100% healthy for it. I'm just not there yet. I'm still not 100%. I know I look a lot better, but on Tuesday, I woke up, and this was very bad. It was a bad scene, and I had to go back to the hospital, and I've had to kind of reduce my... Uh, what I was my workload again. You see, it's kind of red still. Anyways, so yeah, once once this is finally settled, we'll do it because I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rock and roll and give that all those gifts away, Peter. Thanks for your patience. Uh, Patty's project in Brighton, Ontario, 20 minutes from Trenton, and they got me. Ha uh -huh, Yeah, it's 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 crappy. Maurice Divero, you use Bailey Nelson Insurance. Have you ever had a claim? No, no. I've never. I don't use Bailey Nelson Insurance at all. I go through a broker. I have a broker. Um, uh, it's called Axel Insurance Broker. Uh, he's excellent. I know. It's, I, I know what I mean is Bailey's Insurance. It's like a type of insurance. It's it's a type of insurance where it's kind of like um, a dry cleaner would have this type of insurance. Like if you give them your fur coat, once the your their fur coat is in your care, it's Bailey's Insurance, which means it's now 
kind of there they, now when they transport it back and forth between they say the cleaning facility and back to the dry cleaning uh storefront it's insured through the entire uh span in which you have possession of the of the of the of the coat the same thing goes with comic books so if i have a high value comic book once the book is with me in my care it's insured uh, against you know fire theft uh, acts of god those types of things and while it's in transport through fedex through ups through any service i i i so desire i'm also insured so that is why i can get away with you know putting down lower amounts on the customs labels because that really isn't you know I have a, a full list of the, every book that I send in each box. So I know if I had to, I could calculate the value of, in every single box if I had to. You know, it's, it's better for books coming back that have been graded, obviously. If the books have been graded, then there's obviously a value on them. Books that are going there, I'm going based on what you and I decide that the value of the book is. That's why I always tell people, make sure you value your books properly because that is what they're insured for. And also, if you're sending books to CGC yourself and you're trying to save a few bucks and go to a different tier, you might screw yourself. If something happens to your book while it's in CGC's care and it's, a, say, an $800 book, but you try to sneak it in under the economy tier and something goes wrong or they lose your book, they're going to cover you for the 400, not the 800. So you be very careful about trying to save a couple of bucks on the tier uh, you, you send your books under because you may burn yourself in the end if something goes wrong. In the likely, in the very unlikely chance that something could go wrong. Um, Patty says, I definitely feel like it could have been a bigger. The celebrity area seemed way too full of empty space, but I'm no, I'm no expert yeah well again this is the comic con it wasn't fan expo fan expo which happens in august is much larger they're trying to make comic con as big as fan expo it's not quite there yet but yeah i agree it was kind of sparse dennis wear a pirate patch i already did dennis it's downstairs but i'm not wearing a pirate patch here you'll all make fun of me um Shelby Thompson, uh, but I do wear at night when I go to bed. I wear a big hard plastic patch. I wasn't, I didn't do that earlier this week. That could have been one of the reasons why it flared back up again. Uh, but I'm wearing a patch to bed every night for the next month, and I, and and this is ongoing. I have to go back to the ophthalmologist uh, on April six, I think. Follow up, follow up, follow up until the and the pressure is good. They check my pressure; it's all great. It's going really well. I just had a bit of a setback. That's all. And 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 today I'm feeling pretty good, but I'm just not overdoing it. I'm not lifting anything. I'm not overworking. I'm just chilling. Still gaining lots of weight. That's what I'm doing. I'm sitting in my bed watching Star Trek. I watched Star Trek today, Dennis, and just getting fatter and fatter every moment. It's terrible. Um, all right, let's keep going here. Um. <laughs> uh, hit that like button custom me tim says hit that like button i'd have to agree with him. hit that like button we got 21 likes only 31 view and 31 viewers here hit the like button certainly would appreciate that um maurice says thanks okay lord thoth says share and subscribe hit the yeah notifications please do Stuart, how's it going uh evening kevin everybody robin says most comic collectors know the look of cgc box even though there is no branding on it, I often worry that FedEx employees know the box and may be tempted to make it disappear. You know, Rob, <sighs> yeah, it could happen. When I send books off to people, I don't put my Comic Doctor logo anywhere. I don't, I keep it very just simple. But you know what? I, I would think, I, I like to think that people aren't, evil <laughs> most people aren't evil and and people aren't going to try to risk uh stealing a cgc box with the potential of losing your job like i i never understood that like is it worth is it worth you know people say people often talk i mean i've heard about pressers well, i've heard stories about pressers oh they swap my books or cgc swap my books or this presser swap my books and Really, is it in anybody's best interest to do any to, to behave in that in that way? First of all, it's not right to behave in that way. And I know what I think is right. Other people might disagree and think that you know stealing is okay. Well, I don't think it that way. But aside from all that, whether you 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 think that if you have nefarious thoughts or what have you, is it really in your best interest to do that? If you're a FedEx driver or whatever, or you work at FedEx and you decide I'm going to steal this box, you can lose your job. And then get and then get and then get arrested for theft. 
you know, I just I just don't think it's smart. And there's a lot more stuff being shipped back and forth in FedEx that's probably more valuable than comic books. And they never know what's inside the box anyway. You might get a box of like, uh, you know, a power pack number ones, right? Nine eights, you know, but still not worth much. So is it really worth that chance, that risk? I don't think it is. So, uh, you know, and it goes back to pressers too. Like why would a press, why would a presser swap anything? I mean, that's the dumbest thing. Oh, we swap this book for that book. Why, why would you do that? All, all, even to, even to give somebody that, that, um, the idea that could happen. It, it just, is a terrible, it, your business is finished. Your business is gone. As soon as you lose tr your tr people's trust in you, your business is finished. So anybody in this line of work, whether you're a presser or you are a comic store owner submitting books to CGC and you start doing stupid shit or, or you're mixing stuff up or, or, or people start saying or you, he must be swapping. Oh my God, you're, you're done. The business is officially over. So I don't know, Rob. I hope, I, I think it's not in no one's best interest to behave in that way or to steal. Um, it's, I, I just think, the, I think the risk is far too great, you know? Um, like when I first started doing this, I always thought, boy, people must, they have to have a lot of trust in you, right? How do, how do you get someone to trust you? And, and, you know, they get to know you and then you get word of mouth and you get references and stuff. But I, I always found it, Interesting, because like if you go to my, uh, you know, I, I have an American USA type thing on my website, and it's like, why Americans, you know, send your books to me? I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm not going to rip you off. And I put in there, I said, I'm a teacher also. And, and, and as a teacher, actually, I, I have to behave a certain way. I can't go out in public and behave nefariously. I can't be unethical because it could come back and I could actually lose my job as a teacher if I behave unethically. I mean, if I start doing things that are, that are, that are not appropriate or, or like I said, illegal, I could lose my job. And is that worth doing? So that's why when I, when I see, when I hear that sort of thing, Rob, I think people, I think even if they have a the flight of fancy that think, oh, maybe I should do that. I think that their common sense would eventually come in and say, well, that's the dumbest thing I would, could do because it could, in the long run, really hurt me. But then again, there are a lot of stupid people out there who might try. But um, yeah, I don't know. I... I, I I, I got great FedEx drivers. They're excellent. I've, I've, you know, they're really careful when they once the books get here. Now I don't know what happens to the books on the way here, mind you. But anyways, that's that's it. I don't know. I, I guess I'm a little more optimistic and don't think people will do that sort of thing. But I know. Uh, Lord Thought, great wisdom. Thank you. Good evening from Montreal. How you doing, Henry? Don't cheap out on insurance. Well, that's it. I mean, but the thing is. Don't cheap out on insurance, but at the same time, you have to make sure that the insurance you're buying is really covering you. That's what I, and I don't know if Canada Post, if say you use Canada Post and you ship your book to, to Sarasota and it goes missing and it's, it's a $3,000, are you going to get that $3,000 back? Has anybody ever had that experience? Has anybody, can anybody say, can anybody speak up to a claim that's been made? Because I've never heard of anybody getting anything back from any of these people, Um, you know? Uh, now that being said, I've never submitted a claim to my own insurance company, but I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, guys, my insurance every year is around, is just under $5,000 a year, my insurance. Okay. Uh, and a big part of that insurance, the, of that policy is the shipping component. If I were to remove that shipping component out of my insurance policy, my insurance policy would be probably cut in half, maybe even more. I pay a lot for that shipping insurance. But and luckily, I've never had to make a claim. So, but it's important if you have to make a claim that you have a good broker, someone who can advocate for you. And I, I believe I have that at Axel Insurance. He's a good guy. He he sat me down two years ago because I had another guy doing my insurance, and he was never available. And it was just a real, it was it was just not a good not a good situation. So I I moved my insurance policy over to to Roger over at Axel in Oshawa, and we sat down and we went through everything with a fine tooth comb. And he's always contacted me and say, okay, here we are. This is what's happening, and I feel very confident knowing that he's on my side. Should a claim need to happen, that's what I want. But again, if you've got big books, you're better off, again, if you have a local comic book store who does CGC submissions, and again, ensure that they are an actual CGC authorized submission agent. Don't just take their word for it. Call CGC if you have to. Go to CGC's website. You can find a dealer list there. And if they're not in that dealer list, they're probably not a real dealer. That is a red flag right off the, off the, off the bat. Okay? Um, 
Then once the, once you've got that information, are they insured to ship your money? They, their store might be insured, but once the books leave their store, are they still insured? And you can all and I've said this before on another video. You can always ask to see a proof of insurance from whoever you're working with. They may not like to give it to you. They might not want to give it to you. But if you're if you're going to hand over say a hundred thousand dollars in comics, just say for example you're going to hand over you know AF50 to Hulk number one and uh, Batman number one, whatever big books. Why would they not show that to you? I mean, I would call up Roger, my insurance broker, and I'd say, listen, I've got to prove to my client that I have the insurance. Can you put something together for me so I can show them? Or can you talk to them? I'm sure he would actually even speak to them on my behalf. That's what kind of good guy he is, right? And that's what you want. And you know what? Is it a pain in the ass for, for you to ask your local comic book store or your CGC agent to, pro to provide that? Yes, it is, because we're busy. And again, you don't do that for a few hundred dollar book, guys. Don't bug them for that. But I mean, if you're giving the, you know, like if you're like if you're getting some big books in, and the the person's giving you like a significant amount of books that are very high valued, I don't see a problem in in giving these people that peace of mind, knowing that you're actually insured. All right, I think a lot of people say they are, and they're not. I'll leave it there, and that's that's that's. So wrong. It's so wrong. Um, Peter says, sorry to hear about the uh, recovery complications, your eye surgery. Important to rest, the quickest recovery. Trust, it all is better. It is great. I'm so very happy with the surgery. I just, I think I may have overdid it. I did a big day on Sunday. I had a big day back to work on Monday. And I'll be honest, by the time Monday night rolled, I was exhausted. Went to sleep. I woke up Tuesday morning and the thing had it gone completely red again. And I'm like, What? I took like three steps backwards. So I said, okay, I'm, and my wife's like, you're not going anywhere for four. You're not going to work. You're staying home and doing nothing. So that's what I've been doing all week. So like, I feel really good, but I just got to be very careful. I can't, I can't overdo it. And, and when you feel good, you overdo it, right? So I'm trying not to overdo it. Like when I go to the shop this Saturday, I, I, I last Saturday, actually Roy, who's uh, out on vacation right now, Roy actually carried all my boxes up the stairs last uh, Friday for me. Um, or for last Saturday for my shop hours, Roy actually came early and took oh, like 15 boxes upstairs for me. God bless him. And, uh, the, the Saturday, same thing. I can't lift those boxes. I'll, I'll have to probably tap Charlo on the shoulder or get my wife to do it or something. Cause I can't carry the, the light ones. I will, but I can't carry the heavy ones. Uh, Dennis says, if you have the same UPS and FedEx drivers, you would be well advised to get to know the drivers. Sometimes it makes a difference in protocol. Darn right. And you know what? Be nice to people. Be nice to people. Be nice to your FedEx drivers. I, mean, I don't know if you have what kind of relationship. I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm very friendly. I talk to them. I don't, I'm not rude to them, of course. I'm friendly to everybody. That way. If you come to my shop, you know, I'm pretty much talk to everybody. But I'm especially nice to my FedEx drivers. I mean, UPS drivers. Uh, yeah. Although I was kind of mad at my UPS driver a few weeks ago, but I won't get into that now. Henry says, you're as, only as good as your word and actions. Sure, but again, uh, nothing wrong with putting your money where your mouth is. If someone asks to see a proof of insurance, why not provide that? If someone asks for me to prove that I'm a CGC dealer, I'll show them. You know, I even say phone CGC, call them right up. You know, I just know, guys, there's a lot of charlatans out there. I know there are. I know, I'm not, again, I'm not mentioning any names. You know who you are. People who say they're dealers are not dealers are using a you know, third party to do their stuff. They're saying that, they're, and that's that's to me is a recipe for disaster. So just be careful out there. Um, oh, borders just complicate things. They do sometimes. Be uh, be very be very pleased if you could turn my action number one repit into the original. Oh, Peter, I'll do my very best. Five grand a year, half of my income. Come on now, you're so full of baloney, Dennis. Jamie Nod. Hey, how you doing, Jamie? If I had action comics number one, I'd drive it to Florida. Hey, you know what? Yeah, I probably would too. But I'll tell you guys, I, I, I've i sent big books there, and I, I do the exactly, and but when, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you again about a really awesome, uh, and Amelia Jade gave me this, uh, this, 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 um, this tip and I use it and it's fantastic. I'm going to give you this tip at the end of the video. I may have talked about it already before, but it's an amazing place to get great deals on shipping. I'll talk to you about that in a few moments. We're almost done. Um, but I have had great success with priority shipping. I love priority shipping. I'll have a box, you know, uh, uh, of books and it'll cost me with this new company, 
like 70% less than usual. And the box will leave my hands at 4 p.m. on a Tuesday. And it'll be at CGC, signed and delivered by 10.30 the next morning. That boggles my mind. I think that's amazing. So long as your paperwork's all right, your commercial invoice is all good, and your shipping label's all good, it goes right through. And uh, to me, that's the best insurance. I know I might have one rough night of sleeping, worrying, the, but you can see the actual parcel traveling all the way down, right? And that, to me, is the best is the, the way to go instead of spending eight hundred dollars on on an insurance spend three hundred dollars on priority shipping so it's there the next day the very next day first thing in the morning that that's and then once it's there you can sleep easier rest easy right uh security versus a few bucks is right just tell them it's as 15 and look innocent <laughs> <laughs> Lord Thoth. Yeah, take care of you, doc. I'm trying. I'm trying. Henry, a dealer may have insurance and think he is covered, but then he is surprised when he tries to make it, and that too. Right? That insurance I have for shipping is special insurance. It's very hard to come by. I know that. My broker said he had he tries to shop it every year to get me a better rate. Every year. Last couple of years, he can't. He's having he just, I'm stuck with what I've got. No one wants to offer it, right? But I have it, and um, it's um, it's special for what because I that's what I need. I'm not a comic shop. You guys have been to my shop. You know I have some stuff for sale. But it's I'm more of a, a depot where you pick up and drop off stuff, right? That's kind of more what my shop is. My office is more of that, and and because of that, the shipping is 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 a integral part of my business. I books coming in and going out all the time. Um, Flash your CGC badge. I don't have a CGC badge. <laughs> Comic book road trip. Let's do it. Uh, okay. It was one more thing, wasn't it? It was insurance. Oh, and carriers. So we've already been talking about, we've already been talking about carriers. And again, I'm going to tell you straight up. My buddy Roy, he swears by Canada Post. He swears by it. I don't. It freaks me out. It freaks me out because Canada Post... Once the parcel leaves Canada and it goes in, into the United States, it's now it now belongs to USPS. It's the United States Postal Service. And again, not to, to to slag on them, and I know Dennis already mentioned them earlier today. Not to say they're a ba they're bad, but I just don't like giving my parcel to one company and then it changes it changes hands at the border. And then if I need help or if I need to contact some, good luck. Good luck. So that's why I, I stay I steer clear of Canada Post sending to CGC. Again, my buddy Roy uses them all the time. Sends his books to CGC, sends his books down to Comic Link, and he has no problem. UPS, like I said earlier, not bad, but sometimes, sometimes, especially if you're a regular, you know, shipper, you're gonna start seeing those secret hidden fees start rearing their ugly head. And the best, in my opinion, is FedEx. And if you use FedEx Express, and when I say that, there's like a few different levels of Express. The lowest tier of Express, the two-day International Express, which will go from Toronto to Florida in around two days, that's the one you want. That's the one where I believe your customs clearance fees, all your paperwork, it's all kind of included. There's no surprises. It goes. And it's usually there in two days. That's the one I think if you're sending your own books down for your own peace of mind, that is probably the one you want. Again, it's called FedEx International Express. Okay. Now, if you got money to spend, you could go priority. Uh, and it pretty much triples the, the, the price, but the books are there. If you, if you pick them up on Monday, they're there on Tuesday by 10.30 a.m., guaranteed signature. One of those two. Now, ground is good, too. I use ground for a very long time, but with ground, again, I had to make deals with the broker especially coming back from from florida to canada i had to make a deal with the fedex trade networks to to kind of come up with a a flat rate brokerage fee because i was getting charged 21 time 15 25 30 i couldn't that's very hard when you're trying to to charge people and be consistent so they gave me a flat rate now which has worked for several years so again to reiterate my preference fedex for someone like a regular collector sending down a few books FedEx International Express is the one I would recommend from Canada. I would avoid UPS only because there sometimes has, has hidden fees, especially coming back 
from from uh, Sarasota. And by the way, when you are doing your paperwork with the CGC website, you have a choice. You can use CGC's in-house uh, FedEx. You can do that. It's not. It's actually not a bad price, and it's not a great price. It, it's it's okay. I would I would actually do that because you actually have good insurance with that too, up to fifty thousand. So for books coming back to you. You don't ship it under your own label. Use CGC's for ease, peace of mind. Use CGC's in-house shipping. Okay. When you're shipping books to CGC, something you want to always remember: CGC will not combine their tiers for you. So if you send one book that's a modern. And another book that's a modern custom label, and another that's a standard, and another that's a standard custom label, that's four different parcels. They will not combine those for you. They'll combine them for me and other real dealers, but they won't do that for you. So what you want to do when you're sending books to CGC, you want to make sure you send them all of the, to save money in shipping, make them all the same tier. So if you've got modern books you want to send this time, pack only modern books and send them and, and again if you, as soon as you add a custom label that's another invoice another invoice fee and a separate box so either have them all custom label or no custom label or just be ready to pay a second shipping fee okay but the best thing to do is to combine or, or not combine sorry is just to have uh single tier orders all moderns all standards all express all economies whatever Okay, that's very important. And when you're shipping them back, Canadians, make sure the CGC now has their own in-house, uh, I guess, return shipping, which is not bad. It's a decent, it's not great, but it's not terrible. But it includes, I think, up to $50,000 of insurance. So that's that's a nice thing. That's a good thing. So you're coming back, you're kind of covered. Okay, remember that. Um, we got some more questions here. Seriously, Doc, my income is 12 grand a year, Social Security. Wow, Dennis, that's not easy. I can tell you that much. I can tell you right now. I once used an Apple AirTag to track an expensive item that I had shipped across the country. How'd that work? Did it work cool? That's pretty neat. Stavos, where have you been? I haven't seen you in years. Who here has ever heard of Canada Post? <laughs> uh, Dennis Mason, no surprise. It's worth a few bucks. Uh, Stav, how do you deal with customs company... My back? What do you mean? Should have had FedEx sponsor this video. Yeah, I know. I know. That's it. I'm a I'm a hired PA and they have to study this episode. <laughs> okay. How do you deal with customs company my back? Stavros, what do you mean? Clarify that, because I'm not sure what you mean there. Um look, Fed I just had best luck with FedEx. I use exclusively FedEx for everything. I send with FedEx to the states i re receive the books back from cgc via fedex from the states the only time i use ups is if i'm shipping within in fact ups rates in within canada are better than fedex and i've had great luck with ups pure later is not bad either uh, i can get even better rates with canpar but um uh, i'm going to show you guys my tip of the day here right now let me get it to you here now this again this company let me get it there. Hold on. There it is. Give me one sec, guys. I'm going to try to get this going for you. This is my tip of the day. And then I'm going to get out of here. Uh, where to go? Here it is. Okay. Right there. Okay. So. What am I doing? Sorry, guys. I got to get this out of your... Uh, There we go. Um, shipping is very expensive, as you know, and there have a lot of companies have popped up third, third, um, third party companies. One of the biggest ones that came into Canada or into Ontario, at least about probably eight years ago, seven, eight years ago was Chit Chats Express and Chit Chats Express is a company which sells is a, it's a great company for eBayers and others that will sell, you know, USPS 
uh, labels and they'll drive the stuff to Buffalo and then ship from their, their facility in Buffalo. And so you can get USPS shipping prices. And it, it's, it's very, very inexpensive if you are shipping parcels and what have you. And I believe Chit Chats also now has... Um, I think FedEx and, and UPS. I, I haven't used Chit Chats in a long time. And the reason why I never used Chit Chats initially was is the, the closest one was like a half hour, 35, actually more like 40 minutes from here. And it wasn't just, it wasn't feasible. It wasn't, it wasn't very, you know, didn't work. So, but now I hear there's, there's a Chit Chats close by to me. I figured there would be eventually. There is, but I don't need them anymore because I found another company which I preferred, prefer. And this company is called Freightcom.com. Freightcom.com. Guys, if you are shipping stuff to the States, in Canada, whatever, you want to set up a Freightcom.com account. You go on there, you set up an account, an account person will call you 24 hours later, later and ask you questions about what, what you're sending or what have you, and they will set you up. And I believe this actually works for Americans too. This company, guys, is unbelievable. It's, uh, I'm getting, for example, uh, a, a, a FedEx ground shipment, a full box of CGC, two CGC used to cost me around 120, 100, no, between 90, sorry, but between 80 and $120, depending on the weight. A FedEx ground shipment with Freightcom.com is like anywhere from 38 to 45, it's like half price, more than half price. They're two day, remember the, International Express I was talking to you about. The International Express cost is pretty much the same as what I used to pay for FedEx Ground through the FedEx website. So even the Express is like half price and their priority shipment is also like priority for next day delivery for say just one book from Oshawa, where I live to Sarasota would usually be about $250. One book is probably like 80 bucks. Next day. So boom, it's there less than less than 24 hours. You want to go to freecom.com, guys, get an account, try them out. They are amazing. And that you can book your pickups with that. So so if you do use FedEx or you do choose use Canpar, and you can do and they have Canpar, FedEx, Pure Later, and UPS. So whatever rate you want to use, and um, you can print your labels off. I got a I got a really awesome zebra printer label label printer here for my shipping labels. It's so easy to use and it's so economical. And I'll tell you, you'll save a bundle of money if you're doing a lot of shipping. You really want to have a Freightcom.com account. And I want to thank Amelia Jade for pointing this company out because I started using them about probably five months ago. And I and, and what's beautiful about it too, say you bought something from the States and you want to ship it to yourself in Canada, you can create your own shipping label here send the label to whoever you bought the item from and they'll ship it to you. It's like that press I bought. I created the label myself on Freightcom. I sent him the PDF. He printed it out and now the press is on its way. Pretty sick, pretty sick stuff. Um, anyways, there you go. That's my tip of the day for sh savings on shipping. Um, Stavros says, I've heard of people having to pay duties on return. Yeah, that's we, we talked about that early on and again, um yeah if if cgc if whoever you're getting your books from if they put over you know if the book is like if they say your comics are 400 or 600 or 800 dollars there's a good chance the customs will red flag your parcel and they're going to charge you if it's coming into canada they're probably even if they're all your own books they're probably going to charge you hst first of all that's our that's our tax here in canada and they're going to charge you a customs clearance fee that's that's it. That's why I said early on what you want to do when you're shipping books back from the from the states into Canada, you want to give give on the customs clear on the customs sorry on the commercial invoice. You want to make sure that you're not putting a stupid crazy uh, value on your books because they're going to ding you on that. Now FedEx will nail you as well if you put like if a book at two thousand dollars, FedEx is gonna they're gonna they're gonna get their their HST for the government. Um, UPS is notorious for for customs clearance fees coming into Canada. They are. I got a call this morning about that press. And I knew I would. So there it is. Um. F 
Freight On. Freightcom.com. I don't know, Dennis, what you're talking about. Um, lots of tips trying. Not enough tips, uh, Dennis. Rob, moderate, moderate, or moderate. Okay, Herb. So if you are covered by your insurance while you have our comics, will those who dropped off our books at the TCBS be picking up at your shop need to also pay for insurance? The, the only time people I charge additional insurance is when I have a big book. When you when you submit a book that's like a under a thousand dollar book, I cover all the insurance on that. If somebody has an AF fifteen or if some like that insurance really that I have, it's a place for everybody's books. Don't get me wrong, but it's really there for the big ones, right? For the big books. Um, you know, I did a bunch of big books for Stephen, if you remember uh, from California. Uh, you know, you know, Fantastic Four One, AF Fifteen, and I was sending them in little batches, right? Um, and sometimes singles because sometimes the books are worth quite a bit. Um, it's for those books, and so oftentimes I will charge a bit of a premium on those books uh, to to cover the insurance because if something does go wrong with them, it's going to be a lot of work to you know to deal with the insurance companies, what have you. But the insurance is there. The insurance is there. But you know you don't have to. So if you're covered by your insurance while you have our comics, will those who dropped off our books at TCBS and picking up at your shop need also pay? No. Again, if it's a big book, you're probably going to pay a bit of a premium. I charge usually for big books. I charge $7 per trip per $1,000. So if you're sending, so return from C, if you give, if you have a $10,000 book, I'm terrible at math, guys. If you got a $10,000 book, that would be $140 back and forth for $10,000 insurance with me. And if you check with FedEx, I think I, I come in way cheaper than them. I believe someone told me once it was like stupid, stupid. It was like crazy money. It was like 30 or 40 or $50 per, I think it was like $90 per thousand dollars coverage or something like that. It was crazy. So I'll tell you one time I, uh, I had a, uh, a client come to me. He wanted me exclusively to ship his Pokemon cards to heritage, heritage auctions in Texas and his Pokemon cards. He had three bundles, each bundle. One was worth 35,000. One was worth 40,000 and one other was worth four. I had to do three. He wanted them sent priority. So next day delivery. So, I bundled them all up, I packed them all up, and I shipped them every day. Monday I shipped one, Tuesday I shipped one. And so I can't ship more than I'm allotted, right? So I'm only covered for so much. That means I can only send out one shipment per day if, if I exceed the covered amount. And um, so he came to me just for that reason, because he said to cover, to, to FedEx would have cost him like a thousand bucks per I think it was a thousand dollars. It was stupid. It was like it would have been three thousand dollars in insurance. I didn't. It was a lot cheaper to go through me. It was a lot cheaper to go through me. Um, I had UPS charge more fees than yeah. I've, I've Stavros. That's exactly what I heard earlier from somebody else. You know, I always tell shopper from the states no UPS. And me too. UPS is dangerous, man. Dennis, oh boy. Pokemon cards, yeah, they were very expensive. Anyways, guys, there you go. I hope that uh, that information helps you today. Um, again, if you are new here, I am Kevin the Comic Doctor. I'm a comic book presser. I'm also an authorized CGC dealer located up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And this was another episode of One on One. Again, talking about uh, shipping from Canada to Sarasota, Florida, to CGC, sending your books things that i have encountered my information I, I wanted to share with you guys again today because i was asked just recently about this very question how you know questions about oh even things like you know what 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 um what hst code do you use you know for your uh, i think i had that called up for you guys i, I don't oh, i lost it 
he's had a whole bunch of questions about the cool customs thing and then shipping books down and i want to come on here and just go over some of the, the basic stuff you should consider before you send stuff down but again guys it's my recommendation if you've got a lot of books you want to send you're it's really in your best interest to hire somebody to do it for you um usually they've done it before they've dealt with customs they've dealt with the shipping companies they know how to handle cgc Cust, uh, uh, you know, forms. They know which where your books got to go in terms of the tiers and what have you. Um, yeah, that that's what I'd recommend. But again, you're welcome to do it yourself. And uh, and I hope this video helped. Dennis says, "Good night, Lord. Good night, Moon. Good night, Doctor. All right, Dennis, take it easy." Guys, take care. Have a fantastic rest of your evening. I'll hopefully see you later this weekend with another unboxing. I've got two boxes for sure. I think more are on the way. Uh, and until then, all the best. Have a great night. Take care. Bye for now. See ya.